What's up, guys? Super Goji seventy four here, back with another vi. Oh, oh, God, get that tr Oh, oh. Are they, are they gone? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Are they like gone? I, I don't know if I can do this again. If they, if they come back, I might have to leave. You're sure they're gone? They like they left. They left. All right. Thank God. We we can review a real figure now. All right. Is the camera rolling? Oh god, we are. Alright. What's up guys? Super Goji 74 here back with another figure review, and today's review will be none other than Grand King of War. Yes, I know I finally got one of these figures. It's extremely sought after, at least in my opinion, because I mean, just look at it. It's huge, it's detailed, it it's Grand King Ghidorah. You there's nothing that can go wrong with this at all. For the most part. It's basically one of the best figures out of Bandai in the 90s era, almost around the Godzilla Island series that I'd like. I don't know if I'd fit it in with the Godzilla Island series or if it's just a standalone Bandai figure. I mean, whatever, I guess. Before we jump into looking at this figure, I feel like we should take a look at the box. Okay. The front of the box. Front of the box shows a picture of Grand King Ghidorah himself. It says right here, I think it says, if I remember right, it's like Super Dragon King Ghidorah, which sounds way cooler than Grand, but um, I'm pretty positive they changed it to Grand King Ghidorah. Um, maybe it was just titled that upon this figure's release. It was maybe released before the film or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just about two names that the character was given. I personally think it sounds a lot cooler. Super Dragon King or, or Super Hyper Dragon something. Go look on Club Tokyo. Top of the box, picture of the character himself, not the figure. Pretty cool. Again, right here it says Rebirth of Mothra 3, Super Dragon King Ghidorah. Side of the box, basically showing you how to get the wings on the actual figure. Movie again, character again. Legal crap that no one cares about. Uh, I'll talk about that when we get into the figure. This side, another great image of the figure. Rebirth of Monster 3, Super Dragon King Adora. Japanese, we can't be Japanese. Back of the box. Basically, just a side view of the figure itself. Just like on the front, it shows the dimensions. Basically, selling point of this figure was that it is big. He is big. It says again... Where is it? I don't know what it says on this side. I guess it doesn't. Never mind. Just Super Dragon, King Adora, and that's it. I thought it would say Rainbow Mothra somewhere here, but Rainbow. Rebirth of Mothra. Three. I have no idea what this stuff says. So yeah. Top. Uh, uh, bottom, same thing as the top. That is the box. Let's go on to the figure. Alright, the first thing I have to say about this figure is that it is a massive Bandai figure. If you don't have a lot of shelf space for, you know, big figures like this, then good luck trying to find somewhere to put them. I actually, until I build my new shelves, I just display them on the floor with the box, which is kind of sad, but... Because I want to put them on a shelf, but he's just so big. He's long, and he's wide, and he's tall. He's a shelf hog. Um, he's, very, he's very vibrant. I really like the gold they gave him on this figure, so... If you want a very gold King Ghidorah, that's not the super... Wow, I'm messing up today. The special color version King Ghidorah, the poster image version. If you just want a bright King Ghidorah, you can probably get roughly $70. Get this guy, in my opinion. Yes, he's not super articulated, but he he brings a lot to the table. Let's start with detail, actually. Just get that out of the way. And a lot and with these bigger figures, I'm going to have the camera zoomed out just like this. I think this is how I'm going to start doing my reviews. But when we go into detail, I'm going to bring the camera up close so you guys can see all the detail, all that good stuff. Then I'll zoom it back out and we'll do size comparison and continue with the review. All right, detail and paint job. I think we'll just go over the paint job real quick because it's pretty basic, but it's really nice. 
One of my favorite highlights, you could say, on this figure are the, actually the wings. It's given like a pearl look. I'll show some pictures better showcasing that here in a little bit. Just look at those pictures. Um, it really, it really defines the wings. I'm not like it just looks really nice, especially in bright sunlight. Those things just pop. The rest of the figure, you could see it's just like goldish, almost like maybe like if you just had gold vinyl, like that's what that looks like. It's sort of flat in some areas. And then you have highlights along the toes down here, highlights down here under the necks, highlights, they're like a brighter shade on the crown, horn things, whatever those are. And then for the back, you just turn them around and those highlighted horns will go all the way down to the tip of the tail. You can see the darker shades and more of that pearl on the back of the wings. And the eyes and the mouth are painted with the same flattish red, but it's kind of glossy, so it looks a little a little better than it would be if it was just a flat red. The eyes have just, um, well, I'll go over the eyes when we go into detail. All right, that's basically it for the paint job, just gold, gold, and pearl, and a little bit of red. All right, let's get into this figure's amazing detail. All right, for being a Bandai figure, I mean, Bandai has really good detail, but this guy honestly blows it out of the park for being made in 1998. The face, the scales, the body, the wings, everything about it is just really, really nicely detailed. You can see here the eyes I was going to talk about. It's just the black and the yellow right there, but it really looks nice, especially the highlights. You got his crown thing right here, his spikes or whatever, the flow across here, almost like the Heisei Ghidorahs. The teeth are not individually sculpted. They are just a big hunk of vinyl that are sculpted-ish and then painted over. But they look really, really nice. Each of the heads, it's a its a different sculpt for each of the heads, which basically is just the mouth. Like this one's a little shut. This one's more shut. And this one right here is fully opened. The scales on this figure run all the way down basically through the entire body. Scales look really nice. Let's see if we can get a better shot at that. There we go. The scales, they kind of overlap. They look really good all the way down to each of these legs and to the back of the tail. The wings, like I said, they got that pearl look. More scales in through here. Those look nice. Each of the tips are highlighted with that lighter shade of silverish gold. Those look really nice. Same with this wing. That's basically it for detail. His scales look really nice, his paint apps look really nice, and overall he's just a really nice looking figure for detail and paint job. So let's move on to this figure's articulation while we are zoomed in. All his necks, this one, all of his necks are on a joint seam right here or whatever. They each can move just fine like that. Each of the heads rotate 360, but I don't know if you ever went or Ghidra doing that, whatever. This one and this one. Mine are a little loose, but it's not a problem. I'm not shaking mine around or anything. Once I have them set, they're set. You, The wings do not move because the joint is so, was it wide or long? Yeah, long. So the wings stay in place. I mean, you can move them just a little bit right there, but that's it. The legs could move 360, but you'd have to push it against the the wing and you don't want paint rub and stuff so you know legs do that and the back of the tail does move 360 but mine is a little bit stiffer let's find this guy out that's basically it for articulation for a bandai figure it's pretty good usually the Ghidorahs in the bandai line just the necks and the legs move and the tail's usually on a glue seal but this one has pretty good range of movement and especially for its size Let's zoom back out and take a look at some some size comparisons now. Usually I just do quick, you know, quick kind of cuts with each figure, like just size them up really quick. But just for this video, I'm just going to grab a few that I see. Like this six inch here is the Bandai Memorial Box Godzilla 68. And, you know, for Godzilla, um, not film accurate wise, but just for a geek Ghidorah. This actually is pretty accurate because Godzilla would come up to, or I mean around here, he could be a little higher, 
but actually it works. Now film wise, this Ghidorah is actually 60 meters, so technically he's way bigger than he should be if you wanted to fit him in scale with some of these Godzilla figures. Well, it depends, like if you have a DX Godzilla 2002, oh no, why am I bringing that figure up? I mean a Heisei figure, Heisei figure, sorry guys. Um, a Heisei figure, you know, those are 100 meters, and then the show is 50 meters, or ranges around that point. So, not all Bandai figures are actually in scale, but I think this figure looks, even though it is film-wise out of scale with a lot of figures, it still looks really good next to a lot of them. Let's put him up. Without doing anything. Let's scale him with another Ghidorah. It's the closest one to me. Heisei Ghidorah. This guy would destroy him in a fight instantly. This Ghidorah, as many of you know, is underscaled. So, yeah, he's pretty small in comparison to this figure. Put him back. Let's scale him with a larger figure. The DX Light and Sound Mechagodzilla 2. Out of scale still. But... They look good next to each other. I could see these two fighting right now. That's actually would be a fight I would like to see. A Ghidorah versus Super Mechagodzilla. Nonetheless, they look pretty good. Look pretty good together. Let's put him back. Oh. Mm. Let's scale him with one, well, two more figures. This is the Chigokin Mechagodzilla 75. For any of you that like Chigokin. Looks pretty good, pretty goodish. I mean, this one's a little overscaled, but that's fine. And my Rainbow Mothra is actually way up there, so I'm not gonna get up and get it because I'm lazy. But from the same movie series, let's scale him with Mothra Leo. This actually doesn't work. The Mothra, the Rainbow Mothra by Bandai would be better scaled because this Ghidorah is way, way bigger than Mothra and. You know, there's a scene where, I think it's like where she flies into his chest or whatever, and you get, you get to really see how big he compares to a Mothra. And the Rainbow Mothra just displays that better, because this is an 8-inch figure, and that's a 6-inch figure. Well, 8-inch figure. I think he's a little bit smaller, like, gosh, smaller, more like 7 inches, something like that. I still think it looks pretty good, though. I, can, I, w I would like to display these guys next to each other or my Rainbow Mothra. So yeah, I think it looks pretty decent. Basically, some of my final thoughts on this figure is really, really nice. If you can find a good deal on it, which I got mine for a killer deal, $52. That's usually half off um, its actual price, which is crazy. I never thought I'd get it for that low. A few other people I know have it. Um, Goji Franklin. I think Godzilla has it. I'm not sure. That's all I know. I mean, Richie Sos got one. Those are just popular people. No, no. Max, you need to buy one. I'm serious. If you can find this, you need to buy it. That's basically it. If you guys are looking for a really big Ghidorah, a detailed Ghidorah, and just a beautiful figure in general, I suggest definitely going to eBay and hunting this guy down because he's... Hear that? Hear that airplane? Interrupting my video? First it was Bandai Creations, then it was an airplane. Oh my god. People, man. No respect. So yeah, that's basically it. Like I just said, if you want an amazing figure, definitely go to eBay. Try to hunt this guy down. He's really, really, he's just such a good figure. Really beautiful. I give him, obviously, I'm going to give him a 10 out of 10. I just love it. And yeah, I'll have many more figure reviews coming with coming to this channel. Um, tomorrow's actually, hopefully I'm getting a package. So that'll be a box day video. And then after that, I'll get, you know, maybe some more comparisons. I've been wanting to, after I did that 1954 comparison, Tamashi Nations actually revealed that they're going to do their own Godzilla 54. So now I've got to get that figure to compare with my other 54s. And I would like to just do more comparisons with, like, Bandai Creations and Bandai, NECA and Tamashi, etc. So, yeah, please stay tuned to my channel if you want to see some more Super Kaiju content. I'm going to be posting a lot more here soon. So, yeah, Super Goji out.